we're now going to look at the right way to persist data in the factory in a box and this is the way that it was planned now we have here PG admin which is the our uh, tool for managing Postgres it says what it is on the tin management tools for Postgres SQL we have our server set up called FIAB we have got it we have got a simple standard structure we haven't done anything really to hide or or change the schemas we've got we're using the, the basic public schema and we're using these tables we have a date dimension a process dimension a fax table and a time dimension we're actually missing the events but that's another story that will be something you'll see later on but let's let's work with what we've got and um, this design of schema is called a star schema or a dimension schema um, or dimensional design where we have a fact and that's the center of our star and the and arms out these dimensions give richness to these facts and the rows in the fact table are the granularity of the system so let's let's have a, a quick look at the process fact table what that contains and that contains facts we have a start time a cycle time and we have keys and these keys, the time key, the date key, and the process key, link this information, this fact about our process, to things that give this some meaning. So, uh, interestingly, because of the type of tool, or type of design we've picked, um, all our column headings are readable and mean, make sense. And in fact, our keys make sense, especially the time keys. Uh, the time keys are, are actually the m by minute um, for this for that for this and so you might think there's some duplication here but that's uh, uh, that's that's fine um, there's also some potential duplication on our date and yes that's fine because then we can actually construct these keys as they are and the one that the only one that's actually a properly uh, an integer that doesn't mean much is our process key so let's have a look at what that process key is now the idea here is we have one and two linked to these things and if we look at the process dimension table we'll view edit all data or rows what we'll find is we have a a long thin table and this long thin table contains all of the dimensions about those facts so we have and this is as it stands uh, one and two uh, it really has not a lot of useful information and this is what we're going to change we're going to change this table this process dimension table to take our two XB's A B C D and Fab A which we can see from our dashboard A B C D and Fab A we're going to use those and it says sim 1 and sim 2 we're going to give this this meaning and that will then flow through some of these things will flow through back to our table without doing anything and maybe I should say the reason for that is that, that, that this database, through its views, creates the information that we want to display. So the summary view, if I uh, it sort of gives it tots up all of these values and brings them into a single table which we can use to display the data on the dashboard. So all of the stuff in here is all done through um, the view definition. Look at its properties and the code that defined it. Uh, you can see that this is where the maths happens. And we'll see actually some issues with this, that it, that it actually fixes the time zones. So we don't spec uh, specify a time zone, which we should we should actually get that time zone from another table. Um, so there are some faults in here that we can fix over time. But essentially, uh, it uses uh, information that it selects from the existing tables in this in this query to create this table, which is a view. Now everything in databases happens to be a table whether it's a physical table or it's one in memory or whatever but this is a, a view called a view and so if we change anything in 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 these process tables here 
in the process dimension table that will be reflected straight away in the in the view um, so let's do that let's actually instead of having machine name as sim or machine number as sim 1 and sim 2 um, with some names so the idea of here oh let's 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 really focus on this one machine number you might have in your plant um, an ID that's related to your to your machine it might be 7342 or something like that. Uh, our XB ID is the ID of the XB and that's where the data comes from so that's so that's that's its address essentially so we're able to use that to uniquely identify at a point in time that it was associated with this machine and then we might give it a proper name a name that we can relate to on the machine instead of left sim and right sim which I think is going to be reflected on the dashboard uh, I think we wouldn't see that on this one okay uh, we can use a, a proper name so let's go let's start to change it uh, let's look at our process dimension table I have that open already uh, I think here we have it here uh, see the title public dot process underscore dimension postgres postgres at fab so this is the connection that we're doing up here and this is the SQL now this isn't editable here um, but this is the uh, the SQL select star from public dot process underscore dimension order by process key ascending that's the query now these queries can be um, sort of ad hoc um, we can also create um, views and that are, they're actually sort of parametric sort of uh, um, or parametized queries I think that there's the right term for them so let's change some of these IDs to make them useful we see a pencil here if you don't see a pencil and you see a lock symbol uh, it's quite likely that you haven't changed or defined a process key for this table let's also just quickly flip along to the end of this table and we can see that we have got columns that mean things um, within your facilities these are sort of business this is business information and then we have targets target shifts targets day but here we can see that we define when the row is valid from when it expires the time zone information and whether or not the row is current or not so let's look at changing some of these things we can also just to while I remember we can actually or you can add columns to this without actually affecting the product or affecting the ability of this table to work so these this dimension contains information that's slowly changing this will change you know every time you put a new machine in it will change you know every time that you maybe change an ID but the fact that we also track whether a row is current or not and we have a time we can actually find out we can look historically what was associated with data without losing that information so we're maintaining the ability to look at history so without further ado uh, let's let's give some meaning to these things now this local ID we can use the local ID um, we'll call it just instead of sim one just machine one and we'll call that MC2 and we'll give that the model name OEM name process description well flux capacitor fabrication we'll leave that in there and a black hole generator so that's fine we'll leave those as they are but we'll say machine one is uh, a b c d if i can spell a b c d and uh, f a b a so now we can see here that they're actually in bold we need to write that so let's save that we'll save the data changes and that's done so now the data changes are saved and it's gone back to that so uh, model name um or it could be um it could be an acme MK1 Mark 1 and this one is the uh, uh, flanger our OEM name and the manufacturer we'll leave that as, as it is but of course you can save those changes we don't make use of all these 
fields, and in fact a lot of them, apart from these process keys, uh, local ID and XBID, and plus the the details about the uh, timestamps and currentness are going to be could be left blank. So let's look at what we have to fill in. We look at properties of the table. We'll see that it's important that we have. Oops, let's make that a bit bigger. Uh, that they are not null. The process key, local ID, and XBID have to be not null, and so does the effective timestamp and whether it's current or not. But the rest of the data can be left blank. Perhaps we should have that the local. There is a local time zone set. We can change those things as we want. <clears throat> so now we've done that, we've got machine one and machine two and the XBIDs. Let's look at our summary view. So now we have the information that we changed already there in our in our view. We've got some totals here. The shift targets are potentially a bit optimistic, especially when we have, uh, you know, the, this is just based around some some arbitrary numbers. We potentially should change those. In fact, the shift and day, whatever, all def are actually defined by some of our time dimensions. So let's just have a quick jump at what's going on in our time dimension. So let's see what's in this one. So now we have, here we have where we define from the time of day, you know, what shift we're on. So we have a, a day and night, and we have a shift name. Again, we can add data for that, but for every minute we identify all of the information about the, the time, which allows and the reason for doing that is it allows us to then have very simple queries where we don't have to join too many tables together. In fact, we've only got one level of joining essentially. And we also then also need to uh, identify things about our shifts. So these are specific to your plant. So we can repeat those. We don't, we may, we, you would think you could, well, you, of course you can, you could have just a simple shift table, but um, by and that would be associated with the time key but then of course then you you still then have to uh, join those and make those calculations by having it all encoded like this or all sat in a, what would be the right way to say it by having it explicitly in a table it means that there's less need to do a lot of calculations and it's very explicit so the date dimension is another table that's very similar to that and this actually has all the information between well, 2015 I think it's for about 30 years uh, of data let's see if can we can we change the order of this can we change the order of this selection no I'm not sure we'd have to have select star from public date dimension uh, sort by date key uh, descending DESC I'm not sure we can write that in there Order by date key descending. It's a scratch pad, possibly. Can I run that? I think that's this query. I can't edit that query. But let's just copy and paste that. Let's have a let's just look at doing a query having a query tool open. Paste that into the query editor and let's run that query. Okay, so we've only gone up to twenty the end of twenty twenty six, so that's sort of uh fifteen, twenty six, sort of oh well actually twenty seven, twelve years, twelve twelve years worth of data. So how many rows is that? Well let's just see how many rows that is. the number of days in all those years of course we don't need the rest of it <laughs> because that's done there let's just play that so 4,382 so we only need 4,000 rows well I'll say 4,500 rows uh, to have all those years of data 
so it's very easy to create these tables uh, in fact we have a script to do that and we highlight that in our in our um, documentation but that means that we don't have to do much calculation and the and maybe we need to just look at that table again and where we can see that we have all the information about you know the day of the week day in the month the name of the day the abbreviation of the day whether it's a weekday or a weekend so we can start to do some stuff and you can imagine writing queries around this so why are we using this structure perhaps now is a good time to highlight the reasoning behind the design and that's essentially because we're following this book and that's the data warehouse toolkit now the reason for that is that in the future you will want to look at this data by designing a database with this in mind uh, you can really save the, the the a lot of hard work in create in the ability to create reports 